Okay, so we're back uh, with uh, C2.5, salts and electrolysis for triple chemistry and key stage four additional science. On section two, making salts from metals or bases. So um, it deals with uh, parts B and C from the syllabus from AQA. Soluble salts can be made by reacting acids with, now candidates should be able to suggest methods to make a name soluble solid. You've got to learn at least one or two of these ideas because you could get a quality of written communication um, type question on it. So you've got to learn a couple of these. Um, so um, you react the acid with metals and not all metals are suitable. Some are too reactive and others are not reactive enough. So possibly we could think of gold compared to something like uh, sodium um, or cesium possibly. Sodium could be reactive, couldn't it? And when they say too reactive, what we're thinking of is possibly explosive uh, reactions. Um, in soluble bases, the base is added to the acid until no more will react and the excess solid is filtered off. This is making a copper salt. So we've got to look at really making an insoluble salt and a soluble salt. Um, alkalis then, an indicator can be used to show when an acid and alkali have completely reacted to produce a salt solution. And the second part C is salt solutions can be crystallized to produce solid salt. So here we've clearly got um, copper sulfate. Now then. So we can make a salt by reacting acids with metals. This is only possible if the metal is above hydrogen in the reactivity series. So we've got to think about that data sheet that they give you in the exam and where it is. If it is, then hydrogen gas is produced when the acid reacts with the metal. And a salt is also produced. So acid plus metal gives salt plus hydrogen. Two hydrochloric acid plus one magnesium solid make magnesium chloride, so MgCl2, because Mg is 2+, plus, so we get two chlorines to balance the uh, molecule, plus hydrogen 2 gas. So we've got aqueous, solid, aqueous, gas. Now an acid plus an insoluble base, if we react an acid with a base, we produce a solution which contains a salt and water, and the general equation which describes all reactions of this type is acid and base make salt and water. AB makes SW. Okay. Formation of salts then. So the salt that we de make depends on the metal or base that we use in the reaction and the acid. So bases that contain sodium ions will always make sodium salts, while those that contain potassium ions will always make potassium salts. So it's kind of a cool pattern. So the salts form when we neutralize hydrochloric acid containing chlorine are always called chlorides. You've got to learn that. Sulfuric acid always makes salts which are sulfates. Now the British spelling used to be a pH and the Americans have changed the way that we do it and now internationally we're using an F. So if you see some older texts, they're not wrong, it's just England has um, been superseded by the American way of spelling it. Nitric acid will always make nitrates. So we've got chloride, sulfates, nitrates. The oxide of a transition metal, such as iron 3 oxide, is an example of a base. And that we can use to make a salt in this way. So let's look at this one. This looks really complex. Acid plus base makes salt and water. A, B makes S, W. A, B, S, W. So we have six hydrochloric acid in water added to Fe2O3 looks a little bit complex. So we've got two ions and three oxygens. Okay, so think about the oxygens are two minus. There's three of them, which is minus six in total. Fe2 then, and if we think about it, it must be, it says solid iron three oxide. Iron three oxide is plus three. So each plus three makes um, plus six in total, which balances the oxygen. Then if we move on, and we think about the salt, so we get two iron three chlorides. So think about it, it's obvious, isn't it? Cl minus one times three is minus three, so Fe must be plus three, and water is produced at the end. So acid plus base makes salt plus water. And we balance it knowing if it's iron three oxide, each ion would be a plus three charge. <clears throat> now the practical that you could do, or you might have done in class, is to add copper oxide to sulfuric acid. You warm it gently on a tripod to help it dissolve, but don't boil it. And then you find that the solution turns blue as a reaction occurs. 
that shows that copper sulfate is formed. And then we go down to step three, where we look at the idea where we filter, and that filtering removes the excess copper oxide. The stuff that's not been dissolved, look back to the top, this black oxide here should be now seen in the filter paper. You may, however, not see any. That says that you've not added an excess. And to get all of the acid removed, all of the acid down here neutralized, you've got to add an excess of copper um, oxide. The last step would be is to take what you filtered, the liquid, which is a lovely blue color, and evaporate it, either naturally or with gently uh, with a Bunsen burner to remove the water, to, to evaporate it. Now, this is the named copper salt, copper sulfate, that you should learn. You need to learn these steps. It's a memory thing, so go over and over and over and over it. If you can write out these four steps and write out the equation, that's everything you possibly need. Now here we could look at um, some extension work thinking about acids. Well, nitric acid, which makes nitrates, is a really complex molecule there, isn't it? You've got nitrogen in the middle, which has got a positive, so it must be missing an electron. You've got oxygen on a single bond, which has got a negative, so it must be have uh, got an extra electron. You've got an oxygen on a double bond, and then an OH. Okay. Um, Nitric acid, or HNO3, also known as aquafortis, or the spirit of nitre, is a strong corrosive, what we call a mineral acid. We don't need to know, luckily, the structure, but if you're interested in A-level chemistry, that's the way you're heading. Sulfuric acid, the alternative spelling is our old-fashioned one, is highly corrosive against strong mineral acid with molecular formula H2SO4. It's pungent, ethereal, colourless slightly yellow viscous liquid which is soluble in water at all concentration. Now weirdly sulfur does not follow the octet rules so it has six bonds. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's got double bonds which is kind of unusual. It's got an OH group as well and uh, these three oxygens and another OH group here. Luckily this is just extension work. And that ends our video for today.